So what's the cat's name? Her name is Whiskey Jean Her Samuels. Name. Yep, love it, Whiskey. She has an Instagram page, good. you can find her. I absolutely will, can't wait. I have a, my mom has a cat named Bordeaux. Bordeaux? Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, I have three cats, they all have people names. Mine have weird names. My two cats are Beep and Flint. Okay. <laughs> I have Elliot. Elliot, love it. Claire. And Meredith. Claire. Today is also Claire's birthday. Happy birthday, Claire. Cat Meredith, like Taylor Swift's Cat Meredith. No. <laughs> Great name. But, I mean, Taylor Swift is very clever. Meredith Grey and Olivia Benson. Very, very, very. <laughs> Two iconic television women right there. Oh, oh no. Oh, this is on video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is great. Mm -hmm. Mute it out. I put music. <laughs> I've been saying crazy music. music all week on his uh, thing, so. Music. So actually, uh, when you guys get the labels later, you'll get a chance to get a label. You'll see a picture on the label. This is from where that picture is taken. So just a fun fact for you. Gorgeous property. Stunning. Thanks. We were at uh, Angel's Envy earlier. Yep. And it dropped yesterday. Oh, excellent. Yeah. So where are you guys from? New Jersey. All right. Yeah, we work for a distributor.
family comes in. So Bill Samuel Sr., he actually grew up around Bourbon. If anybody passed a little sign that said Deets Bill on the way here, if you blink, you probably missed the sign. It's real tiny. Um, Deets Bill is where the T.W. Samuels Distillery is located. It's just a shell of a place now. There's nothing going on there. Um, the family that owns it, they don't uh, distill there anymore at all. So Bill Samuel Sr. got out of the bourbon industry. He actually really hated the bourbon that his father and his grandfather made. He referred to it quite often as old rock gut whiskey. It was too bitter, it tasted disgusting, and a lot of the community agreed with me. So he sold it off to stop making it. Uh, him and his wife Margie, uh, after school, they ended up buying some fine land. If you guys drove through Bardstown on the way here, you might have saw Star Hill Farms. Uh, the family does not own it anymore, so please don't stop by there. They don't want to see you. I'll see you instead. <laughs> We'll, we'll hang out together. All right, so they had the farm. World War II kicked off. Um, Bill Sr. joined the Navy. He served during the Navy and uh, served in the Navy during World War II. When he came home from the Navy, uh, his wife had been running Star Hill Farms all by herself, turning a profit on this cattle farm. Very savvy businesswoman Margie was. So Bill was just in the way. Uh, one day, she just had about enough. He'd just been sitting on the couch, hadn't doing anything. She's trying to clean up the labor room. He's got his feet kicked up. And uh, she looks and says, Bill, tomorrow you're going to leave this house by 8 in the morning. You're not going to come home till 5. I don't care what you do, just don't do it here. And after that, he had to be out of the house. He didn't like that bitterness. He didn't like that rock gut whiskey taste. So Pappy recommended that he use wheat instead of rye, which brings us to our mash bill. Okay? We have a 70% corn, 16% soft red winter wheat, 14% malted barley. Now the corn and the red winter wheat come from about 60 mile radius from here. That malted barley does not grow well in the state of Kentucky, so we source it from the Dakota, Wisconsin, Michigan area. That's very important, okay? Now that we've got a mash bill and we know what we're gonna use, we gotta have a place to do it, right? So around the early 1950s, there were approximately 200 properties and distilleries for sale in the state of Kentucky. We ultimately settled on this one 20, 25 minutes away from the family farm. The closeness or the location is key, but that wasn't paramount, okay? The 20, 25 minutes away to why we purchased this land. Uh, it was 225 acres for $35,000. That was also not the reason that we bought this land. Now, if you look over this way, you see that black warehouse. On the other side of that warehouse is a hill. On the other side of that hill is a 10 acre spring fed lake that sits on that limestone shelf that runs through Kentucky, Tennessee, Southern Ohio, and Southern Indiana. Great for bourbon making, all right? That's why a lot of the bourbon water are in this part of the country. Makes so, sense. All right. So now that we've got our water source, uh, Bill was also friends with the Peterson family. Um, the father that ran Peterson Farm, Mr. Peterson, he had two sons that were actually studying agriculture in the UK. So he made this partnership with the Peterson family because he knew that the sons were in it for the long haul. He really would be there to have those grains for us to support us. We still currently use that Peterson family partnership to this day. They've grown significantly with their farmland, and our bond with them has just grown stronger over the years, okay? All right, so if you guys follow me, we're going to go inside. I'll tell you a little bit more about how it happens. For photo ops. Oh, right? It's in the park. <laughs> Should have brought it. Because our mass bill is 70%. 
Are these facilities? Oh my god.
Rob Samuels is the COO. Basically. Her family's still involved. Oh, heavily. Like the trees. You guys come on in a little bit. There's still some more circle here. Lots of room. Oh, I don't want you, that's kind of that's muddy. I don't want you to go too far <laughs> over. Mark of the maker. 
Margie loved that so much and thought, wow, that's such a great idea. We should have our own mark. There's something that we can be proud of because if you're proud of it, you're willing to put the mark on the bottle it is that you're selling. So that being said, that circle and the star, that actually comes from the cattle brand. Remember, because we own the cattle farms, Star Hill Farms. The S is for the last name Samuels, and then the IV because Bill Sr. is a fourth generation commercial distiller in his family. So that is the mark of the maker, and our bottle is Maker's Mark because we're proud of it. All right, you guys follow me, That's we'll cool. go to the warehouse. Yeah, like that. Fancy way to get <laughs> Second tour this morning, I was like, they were here on my first tour. Yeah. Somebody put in their bag. Somebody yeah. what? Put it in their bag. 525 <laughs> pounds. It fits in your bag. Woo. We got everybody in here? Not yet. Not yet? <coughs> Watch your head if you're tall. I think we're just about all here. Watch your head if you're tall. Some of you are ducking a little bit. I don't need anybody to knock themselves out. All right. All right, so rick house, rack house, barrel house, warehouse, it all means the same thing. You guys are standing in warehouse A. Maker's Mark has 38 warehouses. This is our smallest one. This one is filled to capacity, can hold 5,000 barrels. Now, if you guys drove through Loretto on the way here, you saw those great big black buildings. It's not prisons for bad children, it's warehouses. Mm. Um, and those can actually hold 50,000 barrels apiece. State of Kentucky, we have more barrels of bourbon and people and racehorses, and we don't mind. So if you don't live here, don't move here, don't mess up my numbers. All right. <laughs> no, it's fine. Everyone's welcome. Just don't drink my bourbon. <laughs> All right. So since we are in the warehouse, we'll go ahead and talk about what's stored in the warehouse with barrels. So. Anybody know the rules for bourbon as far as the barrel goes? One time. One time. Yep. Brand new, charred oak. All right, so we use white oak. Um, ours is charred at a level three. Now, industry standard for charring inside a barrel is a level four. That means that it sits with an open flame on it for approximately 55 seconds. Ours is a level three char, so it sits with an open flame for approximately 40 seconds. And really, that's just going to help impart more flavor um, into the distillate itself inside the bourbon, all right? So these barrels, we're going to start with the barrels before we put anything in them. We actually source our barrels from an independent state company. They're the largest barrel maker in the world. They have their Kentucky Coopers that's about 20 minutes up the road in Lebanon. Uh, we have had a partnership with them since the beginning, since Maker's Mark opened, 1953, and we get all of our barrels from them. They are the world's largest, like I said, uh, and they have... Uh, Cooperages and accounts on five continents around the world. So they know a thing or two about making barrels. All right, so with our barrel, empty barrel weighs approximately 110 pounds. We go ahead and we fill it up. It starts at the top floor inside of our warehouses. It's where it's going to go. It's going to spend three full Kentucky summers in the top of our warehouses. What's a Kentucky summer? Well, here in Kentucky, they're pretty different. Maybe they're the same if uh, you live pretty close here. Sometimes we have all four seasons in one week here. So, Kentucky summers. So after that, we have a taste panel here at Maker's Mark. It consists of approximately 30 individuals, and it's part of their job, tough job, uh, to go ahead and taste 
different uh, lots or different barrels from different lots. And they're really just checking uh, for color, consistency from a previous lot itself. So they're just making sure that everything's the same and it's meeting our standards. Should it pass the inspection, we'll go ahead and rotate those barrels down to our lower floor where they've then spent three additional years. If they don't pass inspection, they're just going to sit on the floor where they currently are for a little bit longer. No big deal. Um, so here at Maker's Mark, we age to taste, not to time. At the end of the three years on the bottom floors, once again, that taste panel is going to step up and do that hard job. Um, and they're going to go ahead and check it again, the quality control for it. If you guys figure out how I can get a taste panel job, please let me know. Uh, I think I'd do really good at it. If I find out, I'm not going to tell you, though, because I want the job. All right, fair enough. All right. So, uh, total time, we say anywhere from five and three quarters to seven years in the aging process. All right, after we're done aging, what do we do with the barrel? We sell it. All right, so we actually have a partnership with Lafroy. Anybody drink scotch? Familiar? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah? All right. So they actually have the first opportunity to buy all of our barrels because we can't use them again. They can only be used one time. So, they, again, they have the opportunity to buy all of our barrels. Any barrels that they would not want for whatever reason, uh, they could end up at our gift shop or we can sell them to someone else to use them. All right? So, if you guys don't have any questions, we'll go ahead and get out of here go to the next stop. All right, follow me. <laughs> Beam company, right? Same company. Mm -hmm. so. All within the family. Yeah, exactly. some a mean fucking Jeez. Our dinner is at McDonald's. <laughs> What's that building right there with the? That's where we're going. Right? Oh, beautiful. This building is what we call the cellar. Beautiful.
That looks odd. Hmm? That looks odd. Mm -hmm. Sure.
surface area because of these ridges in the other states. This state right here, when we put it inside the nervous, acts as the ability to almost thicken it up. It helps with texture, so the mouth fill. This is the 46 day that I said. This right here is the mocha day, so it's gonna help highlight uh, your dried fruits, maybe your chocolates. And then this one right here is a toasted French spice. I want you to think about your grandma's making spices, all right? So, combination of those, adding them all together to a number of 10, would be this other display barrel right here. This is what we use for our private select barrels. Has anybody had any makers private select? Pretty new, it's our take on a single barrel program. Because it's very hard to have a single barrel program, we only make one thing. So this is in the works. Um, we've been doing this for less than two years, the private select. Um, but if you guys are willing to continue this ride with me, we'll go into the next room and I'll show you some more about it. Yes, sir, question. By 46. All right, 46. So through that process, that's what Bill refers to as the 46 process, how you use the different woods to help bring about those flavors that you would like. Um, also, we say it's 46, because that's the state number. We say this is kind of where Bill dropped the football. Very clever man, very good at a lot of things. He didn't do a good job making this one, in my opinion, just for me. So what he did is he called the wood maker. He's like, hey, that stage that we've been using that gives us this great flavor for this new room that I got, what do you call that wood? Call that wood number 46. <laughs> that was it. Okay. So, maker 46 it is. All right, you guys ready? Follow me on this next room. <laughs>
When we walk back outside, I want you guys to notice that the back part where we're standing actually has a living roof. You'll be able to see it when we walk outside. The front part does not. It just looks like a regular building, right? It's fine, because we'll call it a cellar. We won't call it a cave. We'll call it a cellar. We won't be breaking any rules. So you guys are standing inside of our cellar. <laughs> all right. Even though it feels like a cave. So, yep, this is where all the private select and the Maker's 46 are short. So I'll tell you a little bit more about the private select. If you guys notice, there's a big fancy room behind you. So in that big fancy room, uh, we have groups that come in. And by groups, I mean it is by invitation only. These are people that are restaurateurs. They, they own restaurants. They own uh, bars. They really hand sell their products. We do have some package stores that come in. Uh, there's, clear, there's over a year long waiting list to get in here right now into our private select program. Um, using a combination of five different types of wood with ten staves going to each barrel, there's a thousand and one possibilities of what could be with a private select barrel right now. Um, we are working with different woods right now to change out some of those staves so that we don't flood the market um, with different single barrels. And then, um, yeah, let's go. Any questions about private select right now? No? Yes, sir. So I see a lot of them signed. Yep. Is that people so that the, they the selected the barrel? In, they get to actually help put those stakes in themselves, help cover the barrel, and, uh, and they get to sign the barrel head. So. Yep. All right. So after this, the next place that we're going to go, we're going to go over to the bottling line. The bottling line, uh, I'm going to walk you through each stage that you see. The bottling line is not running anymore. It's Saturday evening. They were, they were here on Saturdays anyway. Um, but it's definitely Saturday evening and only a few of us are working. So if you guys follow me, we'll go over there, we'll talk about it, I'll tell you a little bit more about Margie, and uh, then we'll go to the tasting room, yeah? yeah. Sounds good? All right, follow me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't usually get any complaints, but I don't want to
Such smart marketing and the advertising. Great base. Some of your faces are like, yeah, that's good. All right. Bloody Marys. You could use it for margaritas. Yeah, you could use it in your cereal. So, anybody's mouth watering after that taste? Yes. Yes, yeah, because your body likes it. It would like some more. So, cheers. <laughs> Yeah, 
No hugs? We're not there yet. We won't give you a hug. <laughs> Even if I have to hug you. Okay? <laughs> I try to avoid the hugs because it's coffee and I don't want anybody to throw up. Like, yeah. hugs. All right, next thing we're going to do, Baker's Mark. All right. I like the way you did that back there. You just like finished it. <laughs> I like that. All right, so Baker's Mark also <laughs> at 90 proof. All right, we're going to pick up that second glass. We're going to go ahead and nose that glass. This is my fourth door. Yeah, this is my fourth door. <laughs> so what do you guys think? Just based on smell alone, what do we think? Better or worse than the first? Yeah. Better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. 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 Yeah
Now we went 90, 90, 94. 111.5, so it's a significant jump in proof. I'll call for volume, all right? So what I want you to do is I want you to know the glass first, okay? And I think that you can immediately smell that this is stronger. And then I want you to take a small sip, swish it around the inside of the mouth, coat the tongue, coat the cheeks, swallow, exhale. That's important. Exhale. Good. I, I got a little cough. I heard a little tiny cough. That's all right. Bring my two. It's not my speed. It's good. It's not like that. Four times too much. Yeah. Five times too much. All right. Now we're going to do it. Okay. Everybody doing okay? Everybody exhale. Right? Exhale. Did you feel your body temperature go up? Yes. Woo! Now we're going to do the same.
Yeah. 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 We got tickets to free, right? Go if you want. All right, so I've got to come up with something to talk to y'all about for two minutes because they're in there. Uh, so let's talk about the things that we've learned today. Rules of bourbon, 51% corn, right? What do we have? 70. 70. Gold star. Gold star. Uh, so this is one that I didn't tell you. So ours comes off the still at 130, okay? And rules of bourbon says it can't come off higher than 160, so we're good to go there. And then when we barrel it, it can't be barreled higher than 125. What do we barrel ours at? 110. What? Gold star. Oh. Excellent. That lots of gold star is nice. <laughs> All right. So. She's terrible at Jeopardy. <laughs> terrible what? She's terrible at Jeopardy, though. She's amazing. She came up with that. Give her another one. Give her a few more of these. I know. You don't drink up. What's wrong with your hair? Your glasses are like half full down there. All right. I think she's about done. Not talking. So we're going to head out. Actually, we're going to head out. Grab a bourbon chocolate ball. Got a real early maintenance for y'all this morning. Um, we do have nuts on that. So if you have a nut allergy, please don't. We've made it this far. Uh, we're going to go into the gift shop. And then uh, there's a show. Happy birthday! They're gonna have some nice art here too, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday. Yeah,